Before we start, please take into account that Arkenforge is a very robust piece of software. The way I use it is in no circumstances the only way to do it. It is far more flexible and allows various techniques to achieve the same goal. Also, in these short clips, I focus on the map making part of Arkenforge, but it is far more advanced with its own soundscape and encyclopedia models, and many, many more. I encourage you to experiment with the software yourself as much as you can. Hey, I'm Timur Sol, and I wanted to give you a few quick tips uh, on blending and on using the new Arkenforge feature, um, which is uh, tile noise. Now, tile noise is something that works relatively counterintuitively. Uh, when I first saw it, I had absolutely no idea how on earth were I supposed to use that even. Um, but with some practice and some testing, um, you'll see that this is actually one of the most interesting features that you'll get in um, the new Arkham Forge. So, normally what we would have is uh, some type of background and uh, the assets that we get are really brilliant so you get this really nice uh, grass which uh, which has the feel of being very natural and if you want you can obviously uh, go into your um, into your hand uh, image manip manipulation tools and over there if you go to tiled um, you can change the texture scale so if you go all the way up to 100 it's barely visible that it's even grass but if you go to minus one or uh, less than one well it's again relatively invisible now the normal preset is i believe around 10 uh, and i usually like to keep it that way let's just do it like this for now that's uh, that's entirely sufficient for us uh, for this uh, for this little video but Let's say I want to have um, a little specks of dirt or some foliage or something like that. Uh, things that are coming from different parts of, uh, of the background. So it usually would be done with some kind of a brush tool. Now this is the old way in which I would do it. So I would use the brush tool and um, afterwards I would go into adjust opacity. Now that what happened before a second was a shortcut. Uh, you have to set them up for yourself and I would go probably somewhere around here and maybe copy it maybe not um, so it would be uh, also over here I would probably rotate it maybe make it a little bit bigger and so on and so on to just have those specks of, um, of dirt but there's a new feature that you can use so uh, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna copy this piece of grass what is it by the way it's foliage ground from the wild dark and forge i'm going to copy it i'm going to paste it just next to each other you see that it's uh, exactly the same now i'm going to pick let's say dirt it's the same thing i'm going to go to replace asset now what this allows me to do is just by clicking create a very similar well actually identical asset um and when it comes to size and scope and stuff like that um, to the first asset. Now, I'm going to go into the image manipulation tools, tiled, noise, and I'm going to put the noise on. And this does look good, right? It's, it's absolutely not what we wanted to achieve. What we do want to achieve is if we go back to noise and we change the noise scale, and this is the important part, if we go to one, you'll get stuff like this beautifully blended um, and it's uh, and it's random so if you don't like it you can go back to noise and you just can add a new noise you can test it now what I actually usually do right now is let's say I have two um, big assets like this I'm gonna push this one backward and I'm gonna use a shortcut again I uh, actually don't uh, see myself not using shortcuts anymore and uh, and hotkeys um, if that would be turned off that would be uh, that would be devastating to me okay so what I'm doing now is I'm having two um, backgrounds on each other 
and you can see they have different types of uh, of noise the, the uh, kind of a pack uh, places are in different places there's one over here and there's one here and so on because they are randomly generated there always will be things like this see the gray part over here the gray part over here is something that we actually do like a lot because if we would like to go into let's say let's say this is a swampy terrain so i could probably just copy this one again and pick some type of uh, water stream dirt let's be let it be this one and again i'm gonna push this one all the way back now what i'm gonna do now is while having this water terrain over here i'm gonna go back to tiled and just put the noise off you see what i did there because there's no noise over there i'm just gonna pick it uh, again because there's no noise over there uh, there's no blank spots so the water fills in every single spot that was blank uh, from the next levels that you have over there and you can see that it's uh, the the stream dirt is the lowest one then you have the dirt and then you have the foliage ground now i could just go into dirt free and again using a shortcut i'm going to push it forwards and now you see that i have more like a beach uh, or a more sandy type of terrain and I actually use this uh, feature in each and every of my maps right now. Uh, I don't see any reason not to use it. Um, the backgrounds pop and they look uh, much, much better when they have some blending, some terrains that are uh, mixed and some terrains that are just basically not the same pattern all over again. Especially since these are random generated noise patterns, this is something that is actually one of the best features that I've seen in any map making software.